When it comes to energy, concerns about scarcity and open access to global markets are being replaced by a focus on competitiveness and climate change. Based on its vast reserves, Latin America has a major role to play if the nations in the region are better able to create the infrastructure that will allow them to exploit their rich resources. What will it take for Latin America's tremendous energy potential to be realized? That's the focus of this edition of Rewind. The energy is at the very heart of cross-cutting issues, as so many of you know in this room. Uh, they affect our well-being, they affect our environment, they certainly affect our work and our competitiveness. Venezuela has the largest proven reserves of oil in the world. Uh, Brazil has a deep water that really contains enough oil and gas to vault it into the world's energy producing elite challenges at the moment. Cleaner burning fuel of natural gas is pretty prevalent in Bolivia, Peru, Trinidad and Tobago, and Venezuela. My point is, what occurs above the ground is oftentimes even more important or equally important to what happens below the ground. In my judgment, Latin America still has work to do to maximize their energy potential. Latin America has the resources to impact social economic growth in the region. They need that integration. They need to collaborate. They cannot look at just one side of the equation for investment. Energy for exportation, generating revenue, bring it in, subsidizing the energy for the local use. It got to be balanced between domestic and exportation. Latin America lacks infrastructure capacity to allow market-driven pricing rather than subsidies and control price. The reason the price is controlled and subsidized in certain country is because there is not infrastructure. You do have a gas in one country, but you don't know how to get it on the other side. Really alluding to my earlier remarks that energy was right at the heart of so many cross-cutting issues, both from an economic standpoint, a security standpoint, and an environmental standpoint. Therefore, you can make, I think, a very persuasive case that it should be a very high priority. So Brazil is now going through a difficult period. Brazil all of a sudden found oil, and boy, they said, oh, no problem. We can monetize it by ourselves. We don't need the technology. We don't need the infrastructure. Uh, we don't need the capital. Uh, we can do it by ourselves. Uh, I think that is a, a road that Brazil has taken here in the last couple of years. Uh, and I think it's going to show them uh, that they cannot do it alone. I think uh, Mexico has adopted remarkably well to the low oil price cycle. Um, I think they, um, they have adjusted terms on oil, they're enjoying the benefits of cheap U.S. gas on electricity, they've taken some significant steps on governance, but they also face some very serious challenges, and one of them is financing the bureaucratic capacity they will need to go forward, and the other is shaking loose this long-term culture. Effect, <coughs> the Chinese uh, uh, statements of uh, commitment to infrastructure building in Latin America. Uh, how, how seriously should we take this? Is this a competitive challenge or is this more of an opportunity perhaps for cooperation in the future? I, I would be, uh, I, I'm not worried about Chinese uh, ownership of equity assets in Latin America. I don't think it's that big and the quality is not that high of the things they've bought into. Building infrastructure like railroads across the country uh, in order to make sure resources can come from the interior. It's probably something Latin America needs. The question is always, what's the price? So for Venezuela, the price has been kind of mortgaging the future. Um, and so that's going to provide enormous constraints for Venezuela. That's a, that's a bad mistake by the Venezuelan government. So to have a 30-year loan to those countries, you know, with decent credit terms to make that conversion, to provide credit support so they can buy gas on a 20-year contract, not on a spot basis, what does that really cost and what do you gain? This is the Asia Infrastructure Bank too. I mean, mm -hmm. Chinese are doing things that need to be done and they serve their interests. I think rather than see it as a threat, I would see it as a challenge. I mean, broadly speaking, when you're looking at energy markets globally, any new supply gets added into that mix and helps moderate prices when prices are high. Any new demand helps add to that mix and, and can support prices as well. So when we look at China now being the primary source for incremental demand in the world. Um, uh, I don't really see a problem with them being a major source of, of uh, investment to help with uh, providing new supply as well.
For more information on energy issues, visit wilsoncenter.org. Search under the Programs tab for more from the Wilson Center's Brazil and Mexico Institutes.